Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. If you dig the videos, hit like and subscribe. Hit the bell so that uh, you get notified uh, to mitigate the kayfabe effect whenever we talk about the comics we're talking about. And watch the video to the end because that helps us out a lot with the algorithms and sends the kayfabe videos to uh, to strangers who are going to be able to uh, discover our fair content. Today we're looking at Spider-Man's Tangled Web, issue number 11, open all night. An excuse to look at more Darwin Cook comics, Jimmy. Man, I dug reading this one. I think I read this a long time ago, but any chance to get into Darwin Cook, as you say, is just welcome, and I feel like I learned so much about cartooning just reading one of his comics. This Tangled Web series, and kind of this like early aughts uh, version of Marvel, man, I have some respect for that. They really tried something, and it, it makes me, frankly, disrespect the damn audience in a way. Not our audience, but comics audience in some way. Because they they were really trying some stuff. They were getting primo cartoonists to come on board, try their hand at stuff. I don't know that any of it floated because they didn't keep that going for very long. It was a small window of time, which suggests that these books were not being supported in uh, in a very big way. Yeah, I kind of wish we'd have spent more time with Joe Quesada about those early days. Yeah. Because it's so interesting what they do. Like, I wonder, did he mandate to editors, like bring in new talent, you know, because it seems like so many people show up at Marvel in those first couple of years under him. Yeah. And uh, as you say, I guess they sift through what sells and what doesn't, maybe. I don't know, you know, because in a way, this is an anthology book, and anthology books are notorious for not selling. So, yeah, I don't know, yeah, man. Yeah, I don't but, know how people couldn't support this book. But let, with, me, let me say it that way. With an anthology title, like, of this stripe, meaning that these it's one car- one creator makes the entire issue that's what makes it the anthology the next issue is going to be somebody else paul pope or somebody this is an opportunity to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall see what sticks nothing stuck i would pick and choose whenever this was coming out me too you know like it would sort of depend on the uh who, who it was that issue yeah yeah this is but i did like seeing this stuff kind of like solo comics like that's Kinda, that yeah. sort of stuff and going through this um First off, fantastic comic. It's a it's a great issue of a comic to get your hands on. Definitely, uh, it changes my own thought process when I talk about the great collaborations in comic books, because I actually consider this to be a great collaboration. Darwin Cook does a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of penciling, uh, penciling the thing, writing the thing, lettering the thing. Jay Bones' inks on this are sublime. Very nice. He's really good with these. Um, very uh, sparse uh, kind of pencilers. People like Mike Allred. People like Darwin Cook. He slings that thick, chunky brush, like maybe that Winsor Newton Series 7, uh, number 7, uh, instead of the number 2. And uh, Matt Hollingsworth's color, I've never seen him color poorly. Yeah. Yeah, I love the color on here. I didn't realize Cook lettered this, but that makes sense. Like, you know, I like these guys that letter. Like, he lettered a lot of his stuff. The Parker stuff, I think he letters. Um, I think that's such a big piece. And, you know, Jay Bone's a perfect fit. Because if you look at, say, Parker, um, and Darwin Cook sort of goes with the book. But sometimes it's a rougher style when he's inking himself. Yeah. And Bone comes in, and it it sort of adds that smooth, cartoony piece that I think flatters Spider-Man, especially this story really well. I thought this was interesting in terms of lettering. Leave a little extra space for that gutter. Smart. Yes. Smart, man. I love that open, like the open and night. So cool. Real 50s kind of vibe. Kind of like that that Gene Deitch style, Mr. Magoo era. Totally. Of uh, animation. Yeah, I like it all. Looks great. Great poses. A fight with actual stakes that we're going to see play out, man. Like these guys who are still in crown jewels, sometimes there's a reason for that. And sometimes it's as simple as a Valentine's gift. One of the things that I take away reading this is um, I, I draw a lot now on Procreate, like my layouts. Yeah. And it's great for different reasons. You can adjust things easier than in pencil, say. But I kind of get to this stage where, you know, like I have blocky lines outlining everything. And then I print that out and I go and it's like, okay, now I'm going to render. You know, I'm going to do my stupid inking or whatever on top of it. And I look at this and I think like, this is right. Like there's nothing missing in this comic. And yet it kind of doesn't do that step of like the over rendering and little details break out the the uh the the double lot brush right you know like i I find that kind of instructive because i really enjoyed reading this and it's like "Mm, 
that's that's a little bit of a different approach for me. Yeah, it is, man. A, a big part of it is that in a lot of ways, the the audience wants you to bleed on the page. There were so many comments that came in on the on the Jay Lee Spider Man video. People talking about like how disappointed they were that there weren't backgrounds and stuff. And this is you know this is these are the people who are buying your fucking comics, and they want the artists to slit the wrists and and bleed on the page for their three dollars a month or whatever, man. So, I do think that's a Wednesday comic book. Um, thing more yeah. than like uh, comics readers at large. Sure, yeah, no, totally. And uh, but this is Spider Man, <laughs> right? You dig in comic book format. <laughs> <laughs> so Vulture gets the drop on him. He does, man. Knocks that punk ass teenager out cold. And a couple times, like everything Spider does, Vulture is able to foil. How about those webs, dude? Yeah. How about it's those such feet? a cartoon? It's such a cartoon. Why? Why isn't there a Spider-Man cartoon that looks like this? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, get Bruce Tim on the horn. Really good J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> Here's the one skateboarder that doesn't smoke weed. <laughs> Skateboarding, my anti-drug. Man, good with the silhouettes, too. The shapes and everything, like the panel compositions are so strong. They really are, man. Like, when you have spare lines like this... You gotta be bulletproof. That's true. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing to hide behind whenever you're working this way. Because we see there are bad versions of this. You know, there are bad versions of of like knockoffs of Bruce Tim and and Darwin Cook, and it and it lacks the compositional element, man. And it goes. It's not just the shapes and the orientation of where the figures are in the page. It's where you're choosing to put your black areas. It's directional devices. Yeah, it's storytelling. There's a lot to it that those other guys are just completely lacking actually it's a good vulture his designs are really strong too they are and it's easy to take them for granted because they're so simple but i mean what's better than that face those inward facing teeth man yes that's a good touch they say a rising tide raises all ships jimmy and cartoonist kayfabe the youtube channel is brought to you by the comic books that we make uh we each have a bunch of stuff that's in print so let's give it a quick run through and kayfabers if you dig the channel you dig our comics kayfabe affect these comics let these publishers know that cartoonist kayfabe is a force to be reckoned with man uh to begin with my earliest graphic novel WYSIWYG, portrait of a serial hacker follows the history of high technology from the phone system to WikiLeaks, uh, through the vessel of a single computer hacker, 288 pages. Back to print is the box sets and uh, new printings of each volume of Hip Hop Family Tree, which is my linear uh, sort of retelling of the history of hip hop and rap music. Four volumes in that set. I drew this stuff from 2013 to about 2015. After that comes X-Men Grand Design, where I take the history of X-Men, probably 8,000 pages of material, uh, mostly by Chris Claremont, miniseries, uh, little limited series, things like that, combine it all into one big uh, story, 240 pages of primetime X-Men comics. Get these volumes while they're still in print. There's an omnibus as well. The stuff that I've been putting my energy to lately is Red Room Comics, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, The Antisocial Network. This trade paper bag is on stands today, collects the 2021 issues of Red Room, and lots of extra material in the back. Coming up in March is Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue number one, going to be coming out on a monthly basis, every issue completely self-contained. This is the cover that's going to be on the racks in the stores. These are the variants to go along with these comics, including the Jim Rug, by way of Robert Crumb, Zap Comics Zero cover. I'm going to go in reverse order, Ed, and start with Hulk Grand Design. This is my next book that's going to be available in comic shops everywhere starting in March, but you can pre-order it now. This is a retelling of the Hulk history, celebrating 60 years of the Incredible Hulk coming in March, and uh, 10,000 pages distilled down into two oversized issues, and these are some of the variant covers that will be available for Hulk Grand Design. Ed Piscor, Peach Momoko, Marcus Martin... 
and now Jeff Darrow. Yes. So you can order any of these at your local comic shop. These are not retailer incentives, so just let the comic shop know which cover you want. Get all the covers if you want to. They won't cost anything extra. And uh, pick this up in March, but order it now. Next time you're at your comic shop, or call your comic shop. Let them know about Incredible Hulk Grand Design. You can also still get Street Angel, Deadly Girl Live from Image Comics, a homeless ninja on a skateboard. This collects eight complete stories of the Deadliest Girl Alive and is available wherever books are sold. And The Plain Janes, my 500-page uh, homage to shoujo manga about a group of high school kind of outcasts who start doing public art around their community and get all kinds of trouble as a result of that. Uh, one of the first young adult graphic novels. This thing actually began in 2005 and was just completed in 2019. So you can still pick that up again wherever books are sold now that we're done paying the bills back to the video now our boy's going to be put out for a while yeah that's quite a shot falling and bouncing off buildings on his way down yeah. and that's a fun panel <laughs> it's almost it's almost the costume's been discarded in the garbage it's, he's so <laughs> folded up on himself <laughs> so we cut back we're going to the bugle and uh peter parker he had a lot on his mind uh over the past couple months Double booked as Valentine's Day. He did, man. Yeah, Maybe but, triple book if you count uh, Vulture. The nerdy guy who has all the problems in the world gets all the hottest girls, and they all want his time on Valentine's Day. This is one of the chicks. And, and dude, like, let's just look at everything else. Dude. Like, the cartoon language of all of it. It's a very believable cube. Makes me assume that he spent some time in there. I don't know how these animation studios were set up, but I, they must have had cubes. Kind of this stuff always makes me cringe. It's like uh, you know my, my memories uh, yeah, yeah. of <laughs> seven years in the cube farm. Yeah, for sure, man. And when I when I was in the cube at the call center, I remember I had a, a wrist rocket and a very tight uh, balls of paper, and I would just pop up and shoot people. <laughs> And I have on videotape, man, I got this one dude right in his fucking Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> it was so loud, man. Anyhow. It's funny that our dynamic establishing shots are like of like the pretty girls, you know, once again, another story storytelling approach, because the these are the two girls that uh, Peter Parker booked Bet time Betty with. and Veronica? Yeah. <laughs> and Archie doing an internship. Yeah. It's fun, this B story. So the intern has to go get coffee. And of course, uh, problems ensue. How about that drapery, man? Yeah, so very good. good. Chunky brush. Chunky, chunky brush. I admire whenever you can do the chunky brush on things like buildings, you know, like some of the background details. That's the thing, dude. Like, Jay Bone has figured out how to use that brush with a ruler. That's that stuff that Frank Miller's talking about in that Dark Knight documentary. It takes you two years to learn how to ink with a brush and a ruler. But when you do, your staircases look better. Yeah, and you can see that, it. That, that's a real move. That is not an easy thing to do. Look at all this lettering on this page, man. Three different fonts. In perspective, different points of view. And you think that's Darwin Cook lettering and then Jay Bone inking it like you would a uh, any other mark? Yeah. So our coffee shop drama is that this this intern has an interest in one of the uh, one of the baristas there, who. Another barista likes. Yes. And so he's going to get him back and dump uh, laxative into into his coffee for uh, Jameson. The classic move. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You know, these spiteful guys, they just carry X-lax on their person. Look at how uh, economic it is, too. You know, it's like getting the coffee ready, nothing, nothing. One shot of it, write the initials, and uh, you're out the door. Yeah. Great storytelling. Yeah. This this and reminds this piece, me of the submission guides where it's like you should be able to have uh, interesting two people having c coffee in a in a coffee shop. That is what they cite, right? Yeah. That kind yeah, of thing. yeah. And then I guess they hired Darwin Cook to show us how to do that. Great body language. Even as much as like different size cups mm -hmm. just create an interesting picture. Yeah, it works really well. It's interesting how uh, these guys who are really good are able to do spider-man in a vulture fight and then like some people in a coffee shop almost like a romance comic or a, 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 a young adult comic or something and it's like yep it all works how about that for your time period snapshot you know <laughs> speaking of like when marvel's doing those early moves ultimates i remember was being one that moved the needle like yeah. that was talked about that was a big 
That was a big book in that new Marvel, you know, whenever uh, Quesada comes in and takes over. Yeah. The, the reason I would know that is because of you would see posters in comic shops. And early Mark Miller is, is being a, uh, a big name in the credits. Yep. I'm not sure this blonde character, who she is, if that's just somebody that Cook invents for this this particular story. I think they both are. I think I think almost everybody here is. You know, it's almost like he was, like, interested in telling this other story, and then you just gotta, like... Like, like he's itching to get Spider-Man out of the way so that he can make this other comic. That makes sense. Really good lipstick application. And I saw a video recently, and it was some girl putting doing a video of a makeup tutorial, mm-hmm. and an earthquake hits. And I <laughs> swear she does this lip. This lipstick move happens in yes. that video. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic body language, acting on every Excellent. page, every panel. Look at this line; is just a big arc. Yeah. So good. Makes me think of um, Scott Morris. Yeah, you that's know, what I thought of too. These 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 guys who have that work in animation, and you know, Scott went to school at Cal Arts, taught by like you know the Nine Old Men or whatever those guys were called. Sweeping strokes. You see those animation books where it's that one pencil line, and it's like you got a squirrel or something. I like how he constructs faces too, because I often will do it's. It's very much like one piece, the face. Yeah. And when you look at that face, it's almost like a circle with the jaw as a separate piece that can move around. Right. It adds a lot. It gives you that cheek. I, I don't know, man. It adds a lot, and it's it's different than how I build them. So again, yeah. one of those pieces when I read this, and then it's like, all right, maybe uh, think about how to apply this. Yeah, you see it all there. Yes. It gives him a real chisel look. And then just the simplicity. You know, like, it, that's hard to have the balls to do that. It is. I bet you there were a lot of people that picked this up and were mad. Oh, totally. <laughs> Once again, those, those, those Wednesday Warriors, those aforementioned Wednesday Warriors we were talking about. Man, Spider-Man's still out of it. <laughs> and Flash is in there trying to uh, pick up the girl, pick up the pieces. Very uh, Kurtzman. Mm-hmm. When you have this kind of thing happen, this rhythm. Yeah, imagine if that were printed as a spread. Yeah. That'd be really neat. Could have been his intention. He wasn't expecting a Mark Miller Ult- Ultimates ad <laughs> breaking up his flow. And at this point, Peter Parker is becoming the bane of everybody's existence from J- Triple J to, uh, to the girls. A great smart use of color where like the red and the the red is pretty much Spider Man's color in this comic. Like when you see the red yeah. and certainly in panels like this where it's completely cool colors. Yeah, I mean there he's sitting on green. Yes. It's gorgeous. Hollingsworth is freaking dope. One of the best professional colorists uh in comics. I think he colored Hellboy for a while. Is oh did right? he? I don't I, know. I, I, I always thought it was like... Stuart. But but he did uh, he did um, preacher, he did the celebrated Hawkeye stuff with mm-hmm. uh, David Aha. Just in the middle of it, drop your uh, the dreams, the, yes. the Valentine dreams. <laughs> yeah, man. And we got two versions because we have these two girls, right? Like that's a beautiful face right there, uh, the ad house. Ooh. <laughs> and then you know the new the new age American Gothic, and then you have. Uh, you know, roving reporter kind of set up. And this is that thing where, like, the innovation that you brought to comics with this kind of old school technique is, like, you do not use the black line. Yeah, that's what messes it up. You don't use black. Love this picture, though, because it's, like, Parker and Spider-Man. She, she's imagining them as two different people. Yeah. Also, the Doc Ock arms, perfect element to slip in that that image totally and you could tell this is a maiden voyage man because i would bet you this printed darker than they were hoping for this this paper texture i feel like that's always such a gamble Mm -hmm. that's the toughest part of like specking colors is that you're usually looking at them on the little tiny you know like the the pms the the pantone guides and it's just a little square and it just looks different when it's a full page same with painting a a room you know (laughs) but i'm just saying this is a scanned in piece of newsprint Mm -hmm. you know so it's like it just looks different on your monitor totally he ties everything up in a a 
great way. Like he sets a lot of stuff up. There's a lot that happens in this comic, man. Yeah, and we go back here to our B or C story now with the uh, the tainted coffee. While Jameson's waiting, his wife helps herself to it, and she's the one who suffers the effects. And uh, Jameson puts, he's an ace reporter, let's let's face it, and uh, puts together what's going on here. No, this is no pun puns intended. That is plural, plural because uh, I think Darwin Cook is being cheeky. That's pun one. Because the bad guy who did the x lax stuff, his name is Angus. And you take one letter out of that shit, <laughs> and I think that... Uh, you know, Darwin Cook's being silly. Yes. You know what's weird? This stood out to me. The way they do uh, Darwin does these eyes where there's no pupil. It's mm -hmm. just like uh, it's just like a color iris, and he does it a lot with especially on these girls. I don't know why I've never noticed that before. Right. I think is that an animation move? Do you think? Oh, I have no idea, man. I don't know either, but, but it's really interesting to me. Like I always struggle. You know, you put a put a pupil in there and now you've taken this simplified art and you're starting to get it really busy yeah but it reads very well this way totally, totally. it's slick i like that a lot that's something i will use <laughs> so, so thank you darwin it's so funny too because you know these are our damsels but then we got our homely wife that that looks like chalky white from rusty brown or something fair enough but uh jameson's no catch either so put him next to peter parker yeah no doubt <laughs> Are we shocked that Jameson's mustache has, has, has made it? I was just staring at that thing, and I'm like, wow, that really has stood up, especially with, like, all the, the wokeness. Like, uh, I'm surprised, like, every cartoonist who's ever drawn it in, in uh, the 20 teens hasn't been canceled. And yeah, stuff. you'd think. How about that for your directional device of the cigar? And then this must have been, like, a right about when this the smoking ban happened in Marvel. Oh, yeah. That stood out to me reading this. as like, oh, yeah, right before they, they decided nobody smoked. Did you have any smoking people in your Hulk Grand designs? I had to take a couple cigars out of Nick Fury's uh, I, mouth or hand. I had to take some Nick Fury's uh, stogies and also a Wolverine one or two. But it's, it's on display. There's quite a few panels of it throughout this. I mean, he's just not the same guy without it. <laughs> Who would Groucho Marx be without his stoke? Indeed. And uh, Jameson getting getting his pound of flesh here at the end. <laughs> Come on, a anus. <laughs> drink drink up, son. You know, our, our intern gets his date. Spider-Man wakes up, gets a bunch of gear from the homeless dude, trades costumes. Yeah, what's going on with that? Yeah, I don't quite understand that part. I guess maybe he's not... Uh, He's not uh, well enough to web sling home. And when you see his skin color, like, look at how, like, putrid... Not doing well. ...his stuff is, man. And you see these very vibrant, beautiful women. And then he, there's, like, there's like a light blue tinge that's, mm -hmm. you know, like a 10% cyan that's put on top of, like, all of his stuff to just make him emaciated. That's a good Hollandsworth, you know, as, as the color palette's expanding in the early 2000s. Not going overboard... But just like you said, that you know, add, add that ten percent of cyan or something on top, just enough to make them look sickly. Yeah, <laughs> like look at that. <laughs> Maybe mean, a little more than ten percent. I mean, <laughs> the, the, don't these girls want to get tested after, <laughs> after they see this fucking guy? And this is the move too, man. I've I've been in situations where homeboys got got into pretty hairy fights and got kind of like had some wear and tear on their face and stuff, and their girlfriends man treated them real right on those nights man when that when that kind of shit went down and that's what happens here these girls want to confront him but when he takes that pratfall who's the first people to his defense who's the first people there ready to to give him that, that maternal love set him back up it's so funny because tell me this isn't like your uh, adolescent valentine day fantasy you know you think of these books as like your uh, your your boy boys club fantasies <laughs> there you go listen man that's that chasing amy part about archie betty and veronica man no he's not gay man he's not with jughead he's trying to work these chicks into a three-way oh and speaking of our uh, b and c and d stories yeah, what man. happened in the beginning what was vulture up to Chekhov's Chekhov's jewelry heist don't introduce it in Act 1 if it doesn't pay off in the last uh, act. And that Aunt May is the fucking movie Aunt May. Don't you think? Kinda, yeah. Really looks like her when she lets her hair down and stuff. You never really see her do that kind of thing. And look at him, man. He's got the charms. 
Yeah, he's laying it on thick. He, he's got the charms, in it and then, <laughs> and uh, it works, man, because he knocks the dust off that shit. Because she's like Adrian Toomes. Let's make a love. <laughs> let's see that panel. <laughs> let's not see that panel. <laughs> let's see what that looks like, man. See if he has that like that collar of mane down there by the jam, like some kind of merkin. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to get out, man? Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, K-Favors, like, follow, subscribe to the video. I'm just thinking about, like, if it's a Merkin, like, around his fucking shaft, and then she has, like, a big muff. It's like a, it's like a hairy donut. Thing. We were doing so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design. Tell your local comic shop to order these. Tell them which cover you want. And raise awareness of Hulk Grand Design with your local comic shops. k Effect this book. And you can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to kind of see the making of Hulk Grand Design. You can see a bunch of my original art. You can see the making of most of my comics on my Patreon. But uh, let your shops know. Now is the time to order them. And I see a lot of people post about they've they pre-ordered it. Post where you pre-ordered it. Give your shops some, some love whenever you're out there on social media and, and talking about ordering Hulk Grand Design. Let us know where those books are going to show up. Red Room Trigger Warnings number one. Coming out in March monthly. Uh, Murder on, on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Every issue completely self-contained. Got a kayfabe effect. The next round of Red Room comics, man. Much appreciation to those who have supported uh, Red Room beginning in 2021. Got to keep that train rolling. Uh, you can read these Red Room comics on my Patreon right now. Uh, Jimmy and I have links in our link trees in the description below this video where you can get to places to pre-order our books, order our existing books, and check out our Patreons for, uh, you know, behind-the-scenes scoops on stuff. Uh, what else do we have, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below the video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them those Martian orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.